morning, Great View friends. Happy Father's Day. Today we recognize our fathers, and uh, it's kind of a nice day for fathers to feel appreciated by their children. And uh, so thank you for connecting with us on this day today. As many of us are aware, this is Indigenous Peoples Month here in Canada, and Monday, uh, the 21st is a nationally designated day to recognize and celebrate the unique cultures and contributions of Indigenous peoples in our country. These Niagara lands that we all live in were negotiated by the British government with the Mississauga people in a treaty, treaty back in 1792, almost 220 years ago at a time when the two parties to the treaty really had differing views about what they thought that treaty would mean. Three years after that treaty, my own ancestors took possession of land in this area. So it has personal meaning for me and may to some others amongst us as well. Over the last several years, I have read land acknowledgements here at Great View from time to time. But this year, uh, it seems there may be a renewed meaning for all of us. So follow along with me. As we gather in the presence of God, we acknowledge that the Creator is sovereign over all these lands. The earth was given to us by the Creator as a sacred trust. This is God's land, and the Spirit of God is at work here. And we acknowledge that our church property is located on what were the traditional lands over the years of the Atawandarak people, the Haudenosaunee people, the Anishinaabek people, and the Mississauga people. For thousands of years, these peoples sought to walk gently on this land as custodians. And so we commit ourselves to be respectful custodians of this land and faithful servants of reconciliation with all peoples. Thank you for joining me tonight. Over these past weeks, we've been exploring our calling as children of God. We're asked, are we supposed to follow ourselves to find our own identity, or are we called to follow the one who has called us? We recognize that we are called to be a certain kind of people who live and conduct ourselves in a manner that such that our neighbors and colleagues can picture the one who has called us. Last week we talked about our calling to serve the common good, that the gifts and abilities that God has given us are not our own for our own sort of self-centered purposes, but for the good of the communities in which we find ourselves. We've looked at the stories of the rich young ruler, of Saul, the persecutor of Christians, and of Daniel, the man who spent his whole life serving the common good of the empire that destroyed his land and massacred his people. This week's focus, again, is on our calling to find rest for our souls. Hmm. What do you mean by that, Dan? Well, yes, listen to this call from Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Does that sound like a call to you? It does to me. Come, come to me. Jesus is calling us. We think we've had it bad over this past year or so, and many of us have really struggled. But here is Jesus 2,000 years ago speaking to the people around him saying, are you weary and burdened, feeling weighed down by the struggles of life? Come to me, follow me, and I will show you a different way. But I'm going to take us back even further, right to the beginning. 
Last week we talked about the work that God has given human beings. Uh, the first human beings, they're in the garden. But God also gave them this example in this passage about managing the balance of work and rest. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all of the work of creating that he had done. Now, I don't know if the picture here is an accurate description, but you get the idea. God had work to do, a creative kind of work. He finished it, and he rested. And there was a rhythm to it. Six days, then one day. This creation story here, right at the beginning, is trying to tell us something. Are we listening? In 24 hours, I usually sleep about seven and a half roughly a third of the day. Our bodies physically require that amount of rest to keep functioning. But there's more to us than just our physical bodies. There's also our spirits and emotions and our thinking brains, the creative, productive stuff. And I think this passage te is telling us those are aspects of our being that need rest as well. God said, okay, that's enough. I've done a good week's work. I'm going to focus on something else now. But let me carry on. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. The Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Have you heard those verses before? I think you may have. You may have heard them in a sermon or someone in a, in a word of encouragement. Do you realize that they all come from the same passage of Scripture in the Old Testament? That's a whole lot of talk about resting and quietness and waiting on God. You'd almost think that this issue of rest is an important biblical idea. Those verses come from Isaiah 30, right there in the middle of the Old Testament. They are words directly from God to Isaiah at a crucial moment in Israel's history. Let me give you some background. The northern kingdom of Israel has already been defeated by the Assyrian Empire coming down from the northeast. Defeated and scattered throughout the Assyrian Empire, they will never be seen again. Now the Assyrians are coming for the kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem. And the people of Judah are frightened for their lives, as they should be. This is the manner in which the Assyrians spread their destruction. Close combat, arrows, spears, and these deadly war chariots. It was fear that drove the Judean leaders to consider making an alliance with their neighbors on the other side, the Egyptians. Judah was really just a little drop in the bucket for the Assyrians. But Judah was right on the route for the Assyrians to conquer Egypt, the other great power of the time. So Judah thought, let's side with the Egyptians because they will treat us better than the Assyrians. Well, this brings us to Isaiah 30 and 31. Isaiah is a prophet in Jerusalem at this exact time who's trying to speak for God in the midst of this national crisis. It's not going well because people aren't listening. But this is the word that God is giving to Isaiah that he's trying to speak on behalf of God to the leaders. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for their help, who rely on horses, who trust in the multitude of their chariots and in the great strength of their horsemen, 
but do not look to the Holy One of Israel or seek help from the Lord. Woe to the obstinate children, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance, but not by my spirit, heaping sin upon sin. You go down to Egypt without consulting me. You look for Pharaoh's protection to Egypt's shade for refuge. Isaiah is very aware that the people do not want to hear the words he's been given by God. They are actually taking affairs into their own hands. They are being the answers to their own prayers, we might say. They're going to make it on their own. This isn't a spiritual thing, Isaiah. This is a survival thing. And so they tell him, give us no visions of what is right. Stop. Get off this path that you're talking about, Isaiah. Stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. And that's where Isaiah slows down and gives this word from the Holy One of Israel. Their sovereign Lord, <clears throat> the one who is ultimately in control of their affairs. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. Stop running around, frantically looking to solve your own problems, to take your own control of the situation. Turn, rest, and trust. The Lord longs to be gracious to you. God will bring justice against the Assyrians, against the Egyptians. Don't worry about that. You will be blessed if you slow down and wait for him to take care of you. You keep turning here and there, frantically looking for help. Slow down. Listen for the voice of God. This, this is the way. Walk here, not there. That was the word of the Lord in a very troubling time in, Isaiah, in Israel's story. Let me take us back to Jesus, the one who calls us, the one we follow. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who were ill and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. But very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. If we're going to follow the one who called us, he's going to ask us to slow down and take time to listen to the Father. <clears throat> the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. If we're going to follow the one who has called us, he's going to call us away to slow down and gain some perspective. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their illnesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. If we're going to follow Jesus, we're going to need to practice drawing away to slow down and listen to the Father. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. What are you burdened with these days? What are you weary from these days? Do we try to gain control of the plan, to impose our agenda, try to make things happen. King Hezekiah and Judah were trying to control the agenda for themselves by negotiating with Egypt. And Isaiah said they just needed to let that go. Are there so many options to consider, so much information that we're overloaded, we don't know which way to turn? Slow down, come away for a bit. Are there a lot of things you feel you just ought to do? 
oh, I really should do this. It's such a great opportunity. Slow down. Come away for a bit. Do you find it difficult to accept help from others? So you just keep doing it all yourself. Slow down. If the burden is so heavy that you are weary, Jesus says you're carrying too much. Give it over to him. Are we constantly striving to get people to see us, to, to validate us? Come away. Trust that Jesus sees you. Jesus loves you. Are you the one who says yes to everything? Does it make you feel good to say, yes, I'll do that? Well, until it doesn't, and you're burdened and weary. Come away. Learn from Jesus to say, it's finished. It's done. There's enough. Is this weariness the burden of unhealed wounds? work that the healer still needs to do in your life. Come away and you will find rest for your soul. We're called to follow the caller and he calls us to come away so that he can give us rest for our souls. So I'm concerned that as we start to reopen and pick up the pieces of our lives and work and business and everything else that we were doing, we're going to speed up to the same pace that we had before. We had to slow down. <clears throat> Some of us have learned the practice of coming away and taking rest, taking Sabbath, practices that restore our souls, like a walk in the forest or time sitting on the beach or working away in your garden. These are practices that help us learn to step away, to rest in Jesus. One of the practices we've been developing over the last couple of years at Great View is our even song times. A short service where we step away, sit quietly, and let song and scripture speak to us with opportunities to respond back to God in prayer. This is different from our Sunday morning worship and celebration and teaching time than our intercessory prayer times different from our worship nights or our connect groups for Bible discussion. Even song is quite literally a pause time to let God restore our souls. I'm not trying to advertise or, or market or say that everybody needs to come to even song, but just ask you to consider as the pace of life picks up, will you make it a practice to follow Jesus and come aside to a solitary place for a bit, whether that's even song or some other practice that you have. I'm absolutely convinced that one of the most compelling aspects of the gospel for our times, the good news for these hectic times, is that God calls us to come aside and slow down so that he can give rest to our souls. I trust you'll take a few moments to listen to several of the songs on our page here today. They're a great encouragement to just sit down, breathe deep, and let the music minister to your spirit. So whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3.17 May the Lord be with you this week, friends. Next week, Pastor Tyler is going to be speaking as we bring this series on God's calling on our lives to a close. Take care of the seal.